Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Before we start, here's a plug for The Anatomy Gal, a channel made by my friend and colleague Natalie Wade. She's got excellent tutorials and explanations for lab materials in anatomy and physiology, even with cadavers, so it's really cool. Be sure to check out her channel and subscribe. A link is in the description below. In this video, we're going to discuss something called the hepatic portal circulation, which is a topic that students tend to have trouble with understanding really what it's for. So first of all, let's talk about the liver, which is what this structure is right here. What is the liver's main job if you had to sum it up in one phrase? Other than really being a metabolic powerhouse, the liver's main function is to take in nutrients from different parts of the body, particularly from the diet, and distribute them to the rest of the body. So the liver is kind of like a post office organ. Okay? Things come to the liver from various sources, as we're going to see, and then the liver's job, other than metabolizing them and building new things from them, is to distribute those products all over the body like a post office. And the hepatic portal circulation is a network of veins that ultimately delivers those nutrients to the liver. Okay, so first of all, let's go over the anatomy of this here and talk about the organs involved, and then we'll talk about how hepatic portal circulation gets all those goodies, as we might call them, to the liver. So first of all, this giant blood vessel right here, just right here in my mouse is and where this white arrow is, this specifically is the hepatic portal vein. Now it is true the hepatic portal vein divides into a left branch and the right branch that go to the liver, but we're not really concerned about that. Really just understand the hip, that the hepatic portal vein directly is what delivers things to the liver. But there are several blood vessels that dump into the hepatic portal vein. First over here we have the spleen. So remember that the spleen is the graveyard of red blood cells. So the spleen is actually going to send leftovers from those red blood cells through the splenic vein, which we can see here intersects with the hepatic portal vein. Okay. Right here we have two gastric veins. These are veins that drain the stomach. And so some contents from the stomach are going to be drained into the gastric veins and we see these also connect with the hepatic portal vein, right? Now, going back to the splenic vein right here, this vein right here is called the inferior mesenteric vein. And we see that portions of the large intestine, in particular the descending colon and the sigmoid colon, these regions are drained by branches of the inferior mesenteric vein, and then the inferior mesenteric vein drains into the splenic vein, which then drains into the hepatic portal vein, and then ultimately into the liver. And then over here, if we go the opposite direction is the splenic vein, down here is the superior mesenteric vein. Now, the superior mesenteric vein is usually associated with the small intestine, and it found, in fact, it does drain the small intestine. However, there's a few portions of its branches that actually are gonna drain the ascending colon of the large intestine, and then portions of the transverse colon of the large intestine, okay? So basically, we have the superior mesenteric vein, we have the inferior mesenteric vein, the splenic vein, and the gastric veins. Okay. Now there also is a cystic vein that's going to be involved with the gallbladder. However, uh, we're not really going to mention that so much in this video, but it is a part of hepatic portal circulation. So what is the meaning of all of this? Well, different nutrients are going to be derived from each one of these organs. The spleen, for example, the large intestine, and the small intestine, and then of course the stomach. So let's talk about each one. So first let's talk about the superior and inferior mesenteric veins. Okay. Now we know that when we eat food, we have that bolus of food that's going to move through the digestive tract, ultimately down the esophagus, into the stomach, and then into the small and large intestines respectively. And in the small intestine especially, we're going to have absorption of nutrients. Now the major nutrients that are going to be absorbed in the small intestine are going to be sugars and amino acids. Okay. Lipids don't work this way. They're actually going to have a different mode of absorption, and they're not going to involve the hepatic portal circulation. We'll talk about lipid absorption from the gut um, in another video. But pretty much everything except lipids are going to be absorbed from the small and large intestines, 
and move into the superior mesenteric and inferior mesenteric veins respectively. So, for example, if we have something that's absorbed in the small intestines, a great example of that would be most sugars and amino acids. Then those amino acids or sugars would first be absorbed into the superior mesenteric veins, or at least some branches of it we see down here. Then those nutrients are going to move up the superior mesenteric vein, and then that's going to dump into the hepatic portal vein, and then that's going to lead ultimately to the liver. And so whenever you absorb glucose and amino acids from the gut, particularly the small intestine, that's how they actually get to the liver. They go through the superior mesenteric vein, then into the hepatic portal vein, and then ultimately into the liver, either through the right or left branch. Now for the large intestines. They're going to absorb different things in the small intestines. For example, the large intestines are going to absorb water. They're going to absorb essential vitamins. And anything absorbed from the large intestines, particularly the descending colon right here and the sigmoid colon, those are going to be moved up the inferior mesenteric vein. Okay? But we see the inferior mesenteric vein is actually going to drain into the splenic vein. And then the splenic vein will dump into the hepatic portal vein, and then ultimately that stuff will end up back in the liver. Okay, So hopefully that makes sense. So really with the superior and inferior mesenteric veins, they are mainly for draining the contents of the small intestine and the large intestine respectively. Okay. Now let's shift gears and talk about the stomach, which is not actually depicted here for the sake of space. So there actually are some nutrients, not very many of them, that actually are absorbed through the stomach lining. Um, usually these are small molecules. Um, one example of that is ethanol from alcoholic beverages. Um, actually, alcohol does not have normal absorption. For the most part, uh, when alcohol is consumed, it goes down the esophagus into the stomach, and then it's absorbed directly through the stomach lining. And when it's absorbed through that, it actually enters the gastric veins. Okay, so any molecule that's absorbed through the stomach lining is going to go into the gastric veins and then ultimately into the hepatic portal vein and then to the liver. Okay, so there is some alcohol that can go into the small intestine and be absorbed there, but for the most part it's absorbed directly through the stomach. Okay? So the gastric veins are going to drain the stomach and then dump into the hepatic portal vein. There's also some things we normally don't think about through the diet because they're not, but we have normal breakdown of certain substances in the spleen. Remember that I mentioned the spleen is the graveyard of red blood cells. This is the major site of red blood cell degradation. So red blood cells or erythrocytes have a lifespan of approximately 120 days. And when it's time for the red blood cell to be degraded, it winds up in spleen macrophages and is phagocytized, ultimately destroyed. Okay? Now, remember, with red blood cells, they have hemoglobin, and a big component of that hemoglobin is protein. And so those macrophages of the spleen are going to degrade that protein into amino acids. And of course, there's going to be other things such as iron. Okay? And those substances can actually be sent to the liver, ultimately through the splenic vein. Okay? So anything that's degraded in the spleen, red blood cells, even some bacteria, their amino acids are recycled. Those are drained by the splenic vein and then sent directly to the hepatic portal vein and then ultimately to the liver. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Let's take a look at a model right here from the lab and we'll actually see this with another view. Okay? This right here, of course, is the liver up top. And you can't really see it too well, but this right here, this trunk right here that diverges into the superior mesenteric vein right here and the splenic vein right here, this is the hepatic portal vein. And most of it's covered up by the liver itself. Okay, this is kind of a crummy picture, but hopefully you get the point. If we go towards the patient's left over here, we of course have the splenic vein and we can follow it all the way to the spleen over here. And then we see this vein down right here, which would be the inferior mesenteric vein. And we know, hopefully at this point, that the inferior mesenteric vein is going to drain about half of the large intestine, that is the descending colon and the sigmoid colon. Now we can't see the stomach right here for the sake of space. It's been removed. But this very thin vein right here, following my mouse, that actually is going to dump right into the hepatic portal vein up here, that's actually the gastric vein. Okay, so that's this right here, this thin one. Now remember, the hepatic portal vein, there's two large veins that actually dump into it. 
One of them was the splenic vein over here. The other one, which is kind of going directly down, is the superior mesenteric vein. And remember the superior mesenteric vein, that's going to drain the small intestine and then some portions of the large intestine, such as the ascending and transverse colon. So I just wanted to show you this on the model. But really the major point of this video is that the hepatic portal circulation is to get all the goodies, all the nutrients, with the exception of lipids, from these organs, such as the spleen, stomach, and the intestines, ultimately to the liver, where the liver can then process them and distribute them to all the tissues of the body. So hopefully that makes sense. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.